This is Crime, Mr. Wade, bringing you the stories. Stay tuned for a lot more. Today's unfortunate story is about a Daniel Camargo Barbosa, born January 22nd in the year of 1930. He was a Colombian serial killer and rapist. He was one of the most prolific serial killers in history and is believed to have raped and murdered at least 72 young girls in Colombia and Ecuador during the years of 1970 and 1980s. In his early life, Camargo's mother died before he had reached the age of one and his father was overbearing and emotionally distant. Afterwards, his father married another woman, Dysolina Fernandez, who had fertility problems. This caused his new stepmother to become abusive to Daniel, humiliating him in various ways. She dressed him up as a girl and then forced him to go to school dressed that way. His peers and classmates made fun of him. Despite his humiliation, Daniel stood out as a great student at the Linux school in Bogota with a reported IQ of 116. However, his desire to continue studying was hampered when he was forced to drop out of school to help his family financially. His first arrest was in Bogota in the year of 1958 for petty theft. Camargo had a de facto union with a woman named Alcidia and had two children with her. He fell in love with another woman, Esperanza, age of 28, whom he planned to marry, but then found out that she was not a virgin. This became the root of Camargo's fixation. He and Esperanza formed an agreement that he would stay with her if she aided him in finding other virgin girls to rape. Thus, beginning a period of their partnership in crime, Esperanza was Camargo's accomplice, luring young girls to an apartment under false pretenses and then drugging them with sodium sectional sleeping pills so that Camargo could rape them. Camargo committed five rapes in this way, but did not kill any of the girls. The fifth child that they abused this way reported the crime, and both Camargo and Esperanza were arrested and then taken to separate prisons. Camargo was convicted of sexual assault in Colombia on April 10th, the year of 1964. In the year of 1973, he was arrested in Brazil for being undocumented. Due to a delay in sending Camargo's criminal records from Colombia, he was deported and released with his false identity. When he returned to Colombia, he took up a job as a street vendor in Barraquilla, selling television monitors. One day when passing by a school, he kidnapped a nine-year-old girl murdering her after committing rape so that she could not inform the police as his previous victim had done. This was his first known assault involving murder. Camargo was arrested on May 3rd, 1974 in Barraquilla, Colombia, when he returned to the scene of the crime to recover the television screens that he had left beside the victim. Even though it's believed that he raped and killed more than 80 girls in Colombia, Camargo was imprisoned in Colombia after being convicted of raping and killing a nine-year-old girl only. He was initially sentenced to 30 years in prison, but his sentence was reduced to 25 years, and he was interned in a prison on a Gordon Island on the 24th of December in the year of 1977. 
In November, the year of 1984, Camargo escaped from Gorgonia Prison, known as a Colombian Alcatraz, in a primitive boat after having carefully studied the ocean currents. The authorities assumed that he died at sea and the press reported that he had been eaten by sharks. He eventually arrived in Cuido, Ecuador. He then traveled by bus to Get a squill on 5th or 6th of December in the year of 1984. On the 18th of December, he abducted a nine-year-old girl from the city of Corvado in the province of Los Rios, Ecuador. The next day, a 10-year-old girl also disappeared. From the years of 1984 to 1986, Comargo committed a series of at least 54 rapes and murders in Gaikasquil. The police at first believed that all deaths were the work of a gang and not understanding that one man could have killed so many. Comargo slept on the streets and lived off the money he gained by reselling ballpoint pens. Occasionally, he supplemented his income by selling clothing or small valuables belonging to his victims. Camargo selected helpless, young, lower-class girls in search of work and approached them, pretending to be a foreigner who needed to find a a Protestant pastor in a church on the outskirts of a town. He explained that he had to deliver a large sum of money, which he showed them as proof, and he offered them a reward if they would accompany him to show him the way. He pretended that he was a stranger to the area and hinted at the possibility of the girls getting a job at a factory. No one was suspicious of an older man accompanying a girl or a young woman who would be his granddaughter. Camargo would then enter into the woods, claiming to be looking for a shortcut in order to avoid arousing suspicion in his victims. If the girls did grow suspicious and drew back, he did not prevent them from leaving. Camargo raped his victims before strangling them, sometimes stabbing them when they resisted. After his victims were dead, he left their bodies in the forest. Camargo was arrested by two policemen in Quito on 26th of February in the year of 1986, only a few minutes after he had murdered a nine-year-old girl named Elizabeth. The policemen were on patrol and approached him at the height of the avenue Los Grandos, thinking that he was acting suspiciously. They found that he was carrying with him a bag containing the bloody clothes and clitoris of his latest victim and a copy of Crime and Punishment. He was taken into custody and later moved to Guayquil for identification. When he was arrested, he gave a false name, Manuel Bulgarian Solis, but he was later identified by Maria Alexandra Velis, who was the one of his rape victims that had escaped. Daniel Camargo calmly confessed to killing 72 girls in Ecuador since escaping from the Colombian island prison. He led authorities to the dumping grounds of those victims whose bodies had not yet been recovered. The bodies had been dismembered. While he told the Ecuadorian authorities of the locations of the bodies and how the sadistic crimes were committed, he showed no feelings of remorse. After raping his victims, he had hacked slashed and crushed the girls with a machete. He gave a cynical explanation for choosing children. He wanted virgins because they cried. This apparently gave him greater satisfaction. According to Camargo, he killed because he wanted revenge on women's unfaithfulness. He hated them for being not what he believed women were supposed to be. In June year of 1986, Francisco Freibis Cordello, a journalist for the newspaper, managed to arrange an interview with Camargo. It was difficult to get the interview due to the police blocking all access to Camargo and the fact that Camargo himself demanded a large fee before he would let himself be interviewed. 
Camargo was convicted in the year of 1989 and sentenced to 16 years in prison. The maximum sentence available in Ecuador at the time while serving his sentence in Garcia Moreno de Crito jail, he claimed to have convicted or converted to Christianity. In this penitentiary, he was in prison with Pedro Alonso Lopez, who is believed to have raped and killed as many as 300 girls in Colombia, Ecuador, and Peru. On November 13th in the year of 1994, Camargo was stabbed to death in prison by Giovanni Nogueira, who was a nephew of one of his victims. He was 64 years old at the time of his death. I hope you enjoy this unfortunate story. I'm Mr. Wade and Mrs. Crime. And once again, we bring it to you.